Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Valerie McKeon and today I'm going to be painting this sunset sky for you. When I was in the hospital when my daughter was born, that evening was the most gorgeous sky. It had the pinks in the clouds and then this beautiful bright orange at the horizon. I really love muted scenes that are moody, but sometimes there's just something really fun about grabbing for the brightest pastel that you have and just going for it with a really bright, beautiful, saturated sunset. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm working on You Art Dark and let's get started. So I'm going to put the reference photo up for you to take a look at. This is the sky that I saw outside of my hospital window. And I absolutely love painting skies. But how often do you go to take a photo of a sky and it just does not do it justice whatsoever. That's one of the main things that I love the most about being able to paint skies is that I can bring in the feeling and the vibrancy that I remember having and seeing there in person. So to begin, I'm using a dark blue harder pastel and I'm just lightly adding a foreground in there with trees, giving myself some extra dark there on the on the UART paper. And UART is a lot like sandpaper. It it feels just like sandpaper. It's gritty, it has the tooth that holds the pigment in place, which I, I really love. And also you'll notice for this video, I was able to record the sounds, which is really, really exciting. The sound and that wonderful scratchy whispers, it's just so much of a part of creating and painting with soft pastel. It really is a medium for the senses and getting your hands dirty and hearing hearing those sounds is like music to my ears. Right then I brought in a dark brown color to just add a little bit more nuance to the darks in my foreground. And you also notice that outside my hospital window in the reference photo, it, it left much to be desired in terms of the foreground. So I'm just making up something very simple here, trees on the left with a distant tree line and then just some grasses. Moving to the sky, I'm using this beautiful blue violet color up at the top of the sky. The way that a sky works in a landscape is that it's darker up towards the heavens and it gets lighter as we get to the horizon. And I'm just putting in my first base of color here and that was a blue color, and now I'm adding the pink in the sky. I, I just love when there are pink clouds. It's one of my all-time favorite things, and I'm using a pink Jero pastel here just to give myself those, those shapes of pink clouds. And I'm using a light touch here. You can see there's still a lot of the paper showing. I'm gonna be rubbing all of this into the sanded surface to give me a really nice base to go off of. So there's nothing precise happening here. It's just adding color, putting down a, a rough idea of the structure of the sky, working from that the dark cool blues now to a lighter um, warmer blue with with a little bit of green in it that's another thing about skies 
up towards the heavens, not only is it darker, but it's typically cooler. And as we move to the horizon, closer to the earth, the sky gets warmer. That's especially true here in this sunset scene because we have all of the warmth concentrated at the horizon. So immediately above that, we do have the influence of that warmth in the sky. Here I'm adding in some, sh what will be the shadows in those clouds near the horizon and going back in with a aqua color, more gray here just to get that other little band of, of shadowy clouds there. This is another aqua color that will be the lightest part of the sky right above those clouds. And here is that beautiful, vibrant orange. It was so fun to pull this super saturated orange from my box to make this really impactful sunset here, here at the horizon. And I'm also using this orange to carve in to the tree shapes that I made with the dark colors. I'll work more on developing what those shapes will actually be. Right now, it's just about getting that initial, initial color down, that initial structure and plan really for, for the entire painting so that I know what's going to go where. Continuing with those beautiful orange colors. I'm using a, a darker orange and then a slightly lighter value. And as the painting progresses, I'll be adding an even lighter value orange that will really give a glow. Now it's time to rub it in. Word to the wise here, this is a sanded paper. I feel like my hands are pretty desensitized to that, so I can use my fingers here without really getting them hurt, but you might want to be careful if, if you are not used to rubbing your hands on a sanded surface. And just speeding that up here to get all of that color blended into the sky. I love the dark you are paper, but I don't really want that dark texture peeking through a whole lot in the sky. Now in the foreground and in the land, it's going to really, really help me a lot, give that sense of light and a beautiful sunset. But in the sky, I do just want a pretty smooth application of color. And now anytime I blend with my fingers like that, sometimes the oils from your fingers can really crush the pastel and make it look a bit dull. Soft pastel is pure pigment. It's comprised of crystals of pigment that have light scattering properties, which is just amazing to me. And when you do too much finger blending, it can really crush those, those pigments. So what I did was once I rubbed it all in with my fingers, I went back in with the same colors in the sky and up, up toward the heavens, that blue and that purple, just to re-add that pure, fresh layer of pigment and, and not what I smashed into the surface. But it did work to cover the texture really well. And now I'm going back in with, again, the same pink, even though I blended that in. I'm now going back in over top of that to give a fresh coat of color. Now you'll see me throughout this entire painting using my fingers to soften down some of that texture. Especially in the sky, I think that a lot of texture can sometimes be distracting. I want the texture in key areas, but I, I want it also to be fairly smooth throughout the sky. 
So it's really a back and forth of toning down some of that texture, leaving some of the texture. There are definitely sky scenes that I, I love to have more of a choppy textured appearance, but this particular sky, because I remember it so well, and even just based on the photo, it's pretty smooth except for in the horizon where I really want the focal point to be where we will get more choppy marks. But you'll see me there again with my pinky finger. It's not so much that I'm fully blending it in. I'm not really pressing hard. It's just a, a softening and a toning down of, of some of the texture is, is really what I'm doing there. Now I have a purple Giro pastel. I love Giro pastels. They're just not too hard and not too soft. And this is a nice bridge color. I have my blues in the sky and then this pink cloud, this pink series of clouds here. And the purple is a nice way to merge the pink with the blue sky, again, to make it appear more of a smooth appearance and have a nice transition from pink cloud to sky. This is a Mount Vision pastel that I'm using now to just add a bit of lighter value pink into the cloud and just a slightly different shade of pink in there. I am using a very, very light touch. And this is so important in pastel painting in general and especially in these skies is that you really want to build up the layers slowly and gently. And if you come in strong with a heavy touch, you're going to fill that tooth of the sanded paper really quickly, and you're not going to be able to get the nuance of glazing and color. It's the layering in soft pastel that just makes it so beautiful. Here I'm adding some shadows to the, the clouds um, where the, the pink is, is meeting there within the sky, just adding some of the grayed down purples, using that same color for the cloud, the sh shadowy clouds before the orange horizon. Again, toning that down with my finger. Now I'm using a hard pink pastel to go over what I already laid down. I mentioned about finger blending and how the oils can really crush the pigments. So something that I like to do instead of using a lot of finger blending is to blend pastel with pastel. A harder pastel is great for this because it doesn't put down a whole lot of pigment but you can kind of use it to roughly glaze the surface. Now here I did do more finger blending just because it still had a lot of that texture. I wanted it to be smoother. So I just went in, blended that out again, and now I'm coming back in again with the pastel to give it that fresh coat of pigment, but without all of that texture showing through, which is just a little bit distracting because as much as I love the pink clouds and that's such a beautiful part of this painting, it's really the horizon that's that's my focal point. So I don't want too much of the clouds, any point in the clouds to be distracting. It is such a back and forth doing skies, especially painting skies, I'm adding cloud and then sky, really lightly glazing and layering. But there's really not a, a right and a wrong here. And this is another, um, I'm going to come back to that thought, but this, what I'm using now is another bridge 
transition from the darkness of the sky at the top of the painting as we get closer to the horizon, how it warms up and it gets lighter. I don't really want these strong bands of color. I want it to be a seamless transition, just as it is in, in life. So using these transition colors or these bridge colors, like I did going from the pink to the blue of the sky with that purple pastel, I'm working now to bridge the sky, the different parts of the sky, so that it doesn't look like a, a striped effect, but more so just a nice gradient there. Going back in with my warmer blue, and then again, just lightly glazing the surface to blend those values and blend those colors together. Doing some softening with my finger. It's all a back and forth. It's all a, a dance. Adding more of that warmer blue. I want to go over those parts that were blended in just to give a freshness of color and cutting into the the pink clouds with some of that blue color just to break up that shape lightly glazing and again using a very light touch here because I don't want to fill the tooth of the paper it's in that glazing and that layering that we get the most beautiful effects with soft pastel and what makes this medium so very unique. Going back and forth with sky, with cloud. So I was saying that there's there's no mistakes here in the clouds. And I, I watched a reel the other day on Instagram and it was one of the the best things that, that I've seen in such a long time, it was Eric Carl and Mr. Rogers, a clip from, from back then. I'm not sure even when it was from, but they were, Eric Carl was painting for Mr. Rogers and Mr. Rogers in his amazing fashion says, so you just put the paint wherever you want. There are no mistakes. And Eric Carl agreed and said, yeah, there are no mistakes. It's just playing. I absolutely loved that reel. And that's how I feel when I'm painting skies. There are no mistakes. It's just intuitively responding to the feeling and the shapes of, of those clouds and that sky. Here I started adding more of those lighter warmer values as we get closer to the orange in the horizon. This is actually, um, maybe it's a little hard to tell, but it's almost a, a green. I'm, I'm using a, a dull green in these, in, in this sky and in this area where the orange is kind of meeting the the blue part of the sky. There's some greens in there, some yellows, but that area is also the lightest in the sky. So I'm using a, a lighter value to cut in. I don't want to cover up too much of the, the shadow cloud shapes. So I'm using some marks just to cut in there and, and give a nice shape to the to the orange sky still using a light touch and then I want to bridge those colors just as I did with the other blues in the sky I'm going to bridge the warmer colors by very just gently scumbling that into the sky. Light touches here. And then using my finger again just to soften some of that texture. 
it's a lot of back and forth. I'm stepping back, seeing what's drawing my attention, what's maybe distracting, keeping in mind the shapes that I want, the movement that I want, especially in that pink cloud. It has such a beautiful movement to it as it's reaching up to the the left-hand side of the paper. Bringing in more of the, the green color. And now this is a lighter peachy color that I want to add to the pink. So as the light is coming from the horizon, it's lighting up the bottom of that pink cloud. It's very slight in the reference photo, so I want to emphasize that in the painting by just having a little bit of light kissing that bottom of, of the pink cloud. Still using a very light pressure Just a really nice, subtle, subtle shift in value and also a subtle shift in, in color. Back with my harder pastel, just to marry these colors together, make it feel wispy and soft and vaporous as clouds are. They're water vapor, which is another reason why I love the ability to glaze with the soft pastel you can get that beautiful effect of just a light vaporous cloud and I added some of that pink even into the blue sky to give that effect softening softening More bridge transitions here in the sky. Now we're going to start to turn on the lights in the horizon and go into that orange with a lighter value orange to start to brighten that up. The saturation of the initial layer of orange is really going to help this painting glow. If I would have gone in straight away with a, a lighter value orange, it just would have looked a little bit flat, but it's that, it's that nice oomph and that saturation of the orange that's going to help make this a glowing horizon. I'm still using a very light touch here with this lighter orange and I'm I'm really going to start to think about the shapes of the trees this is another orange not quite um, as light of a value but lighter than what I had initially put down and then adding to the sort of the center of the the orange there just a lighter value to really make it glow cutting into the trees going back in with the cloud shadowy color softening the edge from cloud and sky Adding a few more little clouds in there. There's no right and wrong here. It's all just intuitively responding to the, the movement in the clouds and really what, what feels right. I'm adding some green as a nice glazed layer over top of the orange. This also ties it in more to the other parts of the sky so that it's not too much of just an abrupt break. 
And now an even lighter value of orange. And here's where I'm starting to add some marks that I'll just place and leave alone. Up until this point, I've really been doing a lot of glazing, a lot of scumbling, but this area is my focal area. And when you have a, a focal area, sometimes having those chunky marks or a mark with a little more pressure, a hard edge is a good way to draw attention. So your eye will tend to go to some of those marks. And an edge is really just where a lighter value meets a darker value. So I want to just make those marks, leave it alone, have it be a high impact. I added even that mark into the tree line. This is called a sky hole because the trees, although it looks like a solid mass in my reference photo, I'm really not going off of the reference photo when it comes to my foreground. And I want to give a little air in the trees to make it look like the sun is popping through. Adding that lighter value to the center there where it will start to make it glow. A few more marks. Keeping the rest of the sky pretty soft makes this area have a nice impact. And even just these few marks have have a really great impact and that's something else with impressionism and impressionistic paintings which is the style that I love the most you really don't need that many marks to make an impact and tell the story that you're trying to tell I don't need to include every single cloud or every every single mark that I see I can just Add a few marks and then the viewer will, will tell that story and, and pull the rest of that together. Back to my vibrant saturated orange at the horizon line to cut in a few shapes here into the tree line. I want it to be an interesting, interesting shape. Just playing around with that. This is called negative painting when you do that, when you cut into an object like that. Now for my distant tree line, this is the same blue that I used at the top of the painting that I'm bringing into the tree line. It's always a good idea if you can use a color in various parts of the painting. It just creates color harmony and really makes the piece feel cohesive. So this was just a light layer that I added. And then I'm using the shadow color of the clouds to cut in a little bit of, of the shape there. This is a still a dark, but a, a lighter brown, just to give a little bit of sunshine to the edge of the tree there. And then another little pop of a sky hole, which is just so satisfying to give those little bit of glistening, glimmery lights popping through the trees. This really makes a piece feel like it has a glow to it. Now I'm going back in with my dark pastel to fix up those shapes a little bit. Add some more depth to the trees. Some pretty hard marks now. I want those marks to have impact. And since this is my focal area, I'm spending just some time here just to get the right, right amount of glow. Continuing with those lighter, lighter value oranges. 
and softening again so that it's not too abrupt of, of a change, but just has that little bit of softness. Now, this is another light portion. I apologize for my shoulder there in, in the screen. I'm, I'm going to get better about filming. This is a light aqua color. And now this is a light yellow, a, a very light, warm yellow that I'm glazing on top of that aqua color. In the reference photo, I'm seeing greens, I'm seeing yellows, and it, it makes sense with a blue sky to have the orange, which is going to cast some yellow, so you would have almost a green cast. And when I glaze this light yellow on top of the aqua, I'm getting an optical mixing effect that gives it a, a greenish cast. But because of the pastel and the beautiful glazing effects that we get, it just looks very nuanced. Adding a bit of light to the trees again, just with my brown color. The orange light would be casting some brown. And now onto the foreground, which I'm really just completely making up at this point, but I know that with an orange glow like that in the sky, some of that is going to be reflected in the land, in the grasses. So I'm adding a, a darker, rusty color to the foreground. I don't want to use as high of a saturation as I did in the sky, but I do want that impression of some glowing orange in the grasses. And this is a warm green to add more grasses, some sense of warmth. I really want to be careful not to go too light with the value because I want the foreground to just look very dark like that nighttime sunset scene. But just adding in a few key areas a Another little pop of orange and a lighter value just in a few places. This helps me with the composition to just draw the eye. And even that orange has almost a, a direction to it where it's leading you up to the trees and the focal area where then you see those little glimmers of sunshine and what I'm adding right now just helps with that to draw you up there to my focal area. This is a very dull, light valued green, and I'm being very careful to add this sparingly, but it gives that, that idea of sun and the setting sun hitting those grasses. These are my little sparkles that I, I love to do. And now some extra details. I am rolling a hard pastel for more just glimmers in the grass. This gives detail in the foreground, but it also acts as an arrow, a, a direction up to where I want you to look. So you start at the bottom, have the glimmers pointing you up. And this is how the piece finished. I did add a little blue into the foreground as well just to tie it all together. You can see the the sky, the glowing vibrant oranges, those marks in the trees which might be my favorite part. This is the palette that I used, a lot of beautiful saturated hues. It was so much fun to paint this vibrant sky. I hope you enjoyed, and if so, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more tutorials to come. Thank you so much for watching.